Doesn't Dairy Queen have like those uh, chocolate blizzard quakes? Oh, they're so good. What's up, launchers? Welcome back to another episode of The Launchpad here at The Launch Crew. Hope you had an amazing week. I know I did. And if you're new here, thank you for stopping by. If you like the content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so you don't miss any of the content as we move forward because we got a lot more coming your way. What are we exploring today? We're gonna talk about Mars Okay, I know that was a little dramatic, but hey. I like to be a little dramatic on this on this particular channel. So in case you guys don't know, Mars Quake is pretty much what you might think it is. It's like an earthquake, but on Mars. And I was actually reading an article the other day where they were talking about the actual probes that are on Mars currently. Within the last couple of months, at least 250 Mars quakes, which is actually more than they've ever thought that Mars would produce in such a short period of time according to what NASA predicts. I don't know about you guys, but every time I think of the word Mars quake, I think of, I don't know, I get hungry for ice cream. Have you guys ever been to, or those of you who's actually been to Dairy Queen know what I'm talking about. I know Dairy Queen has a couple of different creations. One of them I think is called like the chocolate quake or the choco quake or something like that, where it has a bunch of chocolate and, and vanilla swirl and fudge swirl. They should make a Mars quake edition that has like the, the the red velvet in it, like the velvet cake. You know, it's because Mars is red and has a whole bunch of different... Okay, I don't want to get off, <laughs> getting off topic. So as we know, Mars quakes are a little bit different than earthquakes. For those of you who actually remember your geography class, earthquakes are caused by different shifts in the tectonic plates here on our planet. On Mars, it's actually a little bit different with how a Mars quake actually is formed because there's no active seismic activity like on Earth, these are actually caused by the cooling of the planet beneath the surface. So there is some sort of debate saying that because of Mars having a more hollow interior, that a lot of these cooling that actually happens on the surface actually kind of interacts with that much more maybe hotter interior and the cooling actually cracks the crust and causes shaking and, and things like that. In essence, there's this, this sudden release of energy within the planet, and it actually migrates towards a couple of different hotspots. I think Mount Olympus is actually something that we labeled there on Mars that actually tends to have a lot of these actual Mars quakes. And it's great because by measuring these actual Mars quakes, we can actually start to pinpoint and kind of figure out and carve out, at least image-wise, what the interior of Mars might actually look like, which is probably a lot different than here on Earth. Many scientists believe that the actual quakes really don't happen very often. In fact, they say they happen every millions of years on Mars. Of course, like I mentioned, those hot spots are located off of various parts of the actual planet. I think there was one called uh, Valles Marineus, <laughs> if I'm pronouncing that right. It's actually kind of a long canyon system that actually used to habit a slip fault, which is pretty much similar to here on Earth where the contents kind of slide back and forth. The sudden cooling could possibly move or shift the rock formation and the part of the crust, which could also cause this sudden release of energy. Now, of course, the InSight rover uses a different type of seismic measurement called the SEIS, which I believe is the Scientific Experiment Internal Structure which kind of measures the hollowness of the actual planet. Now, one of the coolest things that scientists were able to discover is being able to record the seismic sound of a Mars quake. In fact, when I listen to it, it it's a little bit eerie, and it does have a little bit of a difference between like the Mars wind that whips around the planet versus some other sound that you might hear, even the actual sound of the instrument of the rover's arm moving around. <laughs> That's a little bit of a different sound. In fact, I'll play a little bit of the clip now. Kind of cool, huh? A little spooky, but it's like, whoa. <laughs> it actually kind of lends to the credence that there's a lot of hollow caverns within or underneath the crust of Mars. And it's kind of creepy and 
spooky and all that. <laughs> In comparison, when you compare a four magnitude earthquake here on Earth versus a four magnitude Mars quake on the planet Mars, it doesn't feel the same. A lot of it has to do with the atmospheric pressure and the fact that there isn't as much gravity on Mars may not be as damaging if you were to be standing on the surface of Mars when a 4.0 magnitude Mars quake occurred. And another thing to mention is that Mars is not a perfect sphere. In fact, it's a little bit more of a slightly oval shape, which contributes to certain areas of the crust being compressed and expanded, especially as it's cooling, which also contributes more to the possibility of a Mars quake happening. Now the inside rover has landed on what they call the Elysium Planitia, which is an impact crater, one of the largest on Mars, where there's a lot of smooth surface and some loose rocks. It's gonna take that particular area and do some more seismic activity monitoring to see what other possible earthquakes might be forming to help kind of map out that immediate area. A lot of scientists believe that the actual carving of the lines, which many have actually mentioned before, could have been channels where there were water on Mars, which is now possibly frozen at either the North, North and South Poles. A lot of scientists have actually predicted that there was quite a few volcanoes back in Mars's history that also helped shape a lot of the crust and outer layer of the planet. And these Mars quakes will help kind of map out a little bit more and have a better, clearer picture of how Mars is was and will be in the future, especially as we as humans want to eventually go ahead and possibly colonize that particular planet, how to protect ourselves, not just from the atmosphere and not just from the dust storms that actually happen on the planet, but also when stuff starts moving beneath your feet. You definitely want to have some structures that aren't gonna fall, right? I don't know about you guys, but even now I'm still thinking about Mars Quake as an ice cream. That would be amazing. What do you guys think? Am I crazy? I don't know about you, but I'm hungry. Anyways, guys, this concludes this particular video. I hope you enjoyed it. Go ahead and comment below. Let me know what other topics you want me to kind of go over and I'd be happy to go ahead and share those. And I guess last thing to say is my name is Chani. And as always here at the Launch Crew, signing off.